Hey guys, this is Mark Hutton with adultaspergerschat.com. And uh, one of the things that I run into a lot with couples where one is affected by Asperger's syndrome and the other partner or spouse is a neurotypical is the, the neurotypical spouse understands that her Asperger's husband, for example, um, is hardwired in a certain way and that he does have a developmental disorder. And but then she's wondering, okay, well, given that he has these uh, challenges or deficits, how are we ever going to communicate? How is he ever going to understand how I feel or meet my emotional needs? Well, your first line of defense is obviously to go get counseling from a marriage and family therapist who has experience with autism spectrum disorders. I run into so many situations where they have sought counseling from a neurotypical therapist who offers neurotypical advice, which is going to result in, you know, one of the parties since they're not wired neurotypically, one of the parties are totally not going to understand, you know, how to follow through with this plan because it's not in alignment with how they think. So the first thing to do is, is get with somebody who knows what they're talking about with respect to being sensitive to the partner with Asperger's syndrome, specifically the mind blindness issues, alexithymia, sensory sensitivities, executive function deficits, and so on. It would be a whole lot easier and a lot less painful to just go beat your head against a brick wall than to seek neurotypical advice from a neurotypical th therapist and start employing neurotypical strategies in your marriage. If you've tried it, you know it doesn't work, okay? So there's so many things that can be done. I just want to mention two in this video here. One of the first lines of defense is when you are going to have a heavy-handed conversation with your Asperger's husband you want to give him a heads up that there is going to be a conversation that might be a little stressful. So you don't, you don't hit him with a surprise because people with Asperger's, they don't like change and they don't like surprises. The next thing you want to do when you, the both of you, when you come into this heavy handed conversation that has the potential for stress and anxiety that can result in a fight, you want to view yourselves as team players more specifically, you want to come into this conversation that, that has p the potential for uh, a meltdown or a shutdown or however it ends badly. You want to come into that conversation with a mindset of we're going to pretend as if we're business partners. You know, you are a team player. If you were on a professional football team, you wouldn't treat one of your team players the way you do your spouse. If you were a uh, the co-owner of a, of a business, you wouldn't treat your business partner the same way you treat your, your spouse. So you want to view any heavy-handed conversations, especially when it has something to do with finances or the kids, you want to come in with the mindset that we're dealing with this like it's a business and your family is a business in a sense. The other thing that I want to mention in this short video is when you do have to have this heavy-handed conversation that has the potential for disaster. I find it very helpful to have a brisk walk while you're having the conversation because I have found that when people are having a stressful conversation, their, their breathing becomes very shallow and in some cases they stop breathing altogether, which just reinforces the brain's perception that there's really a threat at hand. So when you have a brisk walk, you're forced to breathe while you're talking. And there's something about breath work while you're having discussion that tends to keep things a little more on the even keel. You can think of it like this. You can't talk and, and take a drink of water at the same time. They're incompatible. And similarly, it's hard to have a really knock down, drag out fight when you're, when you're breathing fairly heavy. So something about oxygenating, oxygenating the brain does help bring the anxiety down to a more tolerable level where you still have a semblance of a rational brain as you're trying to discuss a particular problem and come up with a, a solution. So there's multiple things that can be done in a situation where your partner is limited, so to speak, when he has alexithymia issues, mind blindness, executive function problems, sensory sensitivities, and three or four other things that, that we could talk about that make it a real challenge for him to keep a rational head when discussing stressful topics. But the, the two main things that I want you to take away from this video are view one another as business partners 
And also when you're having this uh, rather stressful conversation, do it while you have a brisk walk, okay? There's no reason why you can't. Even in the winter time, you put on your coats, walk around the block or whatever and have that conversation there. So there's, there's numerous other ways to actually get a connection between the two of you that, that yields a desirable result. And I'm just mentioning these two. If you click on the link below, uh, we can discuss multiple ways to where you can have a good connection with your Asperger's partner such that troubleshooting doesn't end in knockdown, drag out, meltdowns, shutdowns, rage, and fights. Okay? Thanks, guys.